Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revy Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's lesson will be focusing on this single error here. If you're watching this video right now, you probably have seen this a few times already, or even just now. This will show up whenever you try to open a Revit file that is corrupt, usually because it has too many corrupt elements or families that now Revit cannot open it anymore. Well, that's unfortunate because I'm sure you don't want to lose all the hard work you've done in this model. So today, let's look at a few simple steps to make sure we can recover this file as much of it as possible. The first thing to check now is to see which elements are involved here. And to find them, you need to check out the Revit journal file. If you want to know what that is, just go to your search engine and type in Revit journal file location. That should link you in maybe the first or the second result, this article here from Autodesk. And that's the path to your local file for a specific Revit version. Let's copy this now to there and paste it in. At the moment, I'm using Revit 2018, as you can see there. So I need to open the folder for Revit 2018 and then open journals. Here we go. In here, depending on how many sessions you have got for this Revit version, you may have in here not just three or four like I'm seeing now, but 20, 50 journal files. In that case, just sort this list by date modified. And then the latest file should be the one currently active for this Revit session. Also, journal files, they don't come individually. Each Revit session has one journal file, as you can see there, but also another Worker One log file and a dumb TXT file. These two you can ignore for now. We're just focusing on this journal file at the moment. It's a simple TXT file, so you can open with any TXT file reader that you have on your machine. For today, let's just double click and open it in Notepad. As you can see, it's a big file there. This is a real-time log of everything happening in your Revit model, up to the point of the error. That means if I scroll all the way down to the end there, I will get details about the error that is still on my screen right now. And certainly enough, these are the lines we are trying to find. It says here that you have many missing elements, each one on a single line there, along with this element ID. And somewhere in here will be the exact error message that we are seeing in Revit as well. There it is. Model missing too many elements and it cannot be opened. To find out which elements these are, we have a few options depending on your situation. Essentially, you will want to go back to the previous version of the corrupt file, the one that you can open and check out these elements and what they are. If the file you're trying to open is a standalone, non work shared file, its backup files will be in the same folder as itself. So if I go now to the folder of the file there, let's say the corrupt file was that one, then I can try to open a previous backup file, maybe backup number 6, or number 7, or number 8. The higher this number, the more recent the file is. That means if possible, I want to try and open the file with a bigger number first, because this is more recent, and that means if I have to go back to this version there, I wouldn't lose too much work, or at least less work that I would lose if I could go for that number 6 file. The process is a bit different for central model or work shared Revit models. For work shared file, you need to open a backup from the Revit window itself. So if I now open my Revit 2017 version, this one here, you can go to the now collaborate tab, and choose to restore our backup. In my particular example here, the model that generated the error is a Revit 2017 model. I got this error here when I tried to open it and upgrade it to 2018. But the process is the same if you are opening your model in the same Revit version that it was saved in. In my case here, the error only occurred when I tried to upgrade the model. That's why I'm doing this 2017, 2018 kind of thing here. But be assured, anything you see in this video will be applicable to your case as well. Alright, back to the retrieval of the backup file. So the files in Revit 2017, 
I am now in the Return to 2017 window. We can now go to Collaborate and choose Restore Backup. Go to the same folder where you have that corrupt file saved and then find the folder in this same location with the file name appended by underscore backup. Open this folder there. It seems to be empty, but that's all you have to specify now for this step. Just do open to confirm. And now Revit will scan through that folder of backup files and show you all the previous version of this file here for you to select one. In my case, I just moved this file here for this demo today, so there's no other version except from the current one. But if you have here a few other lines that shows previous versions, just click on one of them and then select save as. This will then save that backup version of the model to a new file that you can then open and interrogate. Let's try that now. So I will save this now to the same folder as the original corrupt file. Click save now. And it asks if you want to open it. Yes, please. If you choose no, you can open it manually yourself. For now, I'm just doing this for speed. As you can see, it has opened successfully. If this backup version didn't open, then you have to go back to Collaborate, Restore Backup. Repeat the same steps before. And then select an older backup down this table. Keep going down one by one, test each one if you can open it, until you can open one of them. For now, I have it opened already, so let's interrogate this backup file. We can now go back to the journal log file and just select any of those elements there. Right click, copy this ID, go in here, go to manage and do select by ID. Paste the copied ID number there and press OK. As you can see, this ID isn't valid and won't be used. That means the element is there, but sometimes you cannot select it because that may be an internal element type. So for now, we can try and go for the next ID, maybe somewhere here, copy this, select again by ID. And once again, this happens. Now, this is exactly why this error is kind of hard to resolve because most of the elements IDs that you will see in here are not really things you can select. Sometimes you get lucky, you can select some of them in the model, in the backup file, but usually these are internal element IDs. Revit tries to remove those internal elements, but it stops at that location there, at this element, before it can get to one of the elements you can select. So I will give it one final try. Let's get this final element ID there on that list and then see if we can select this. Still no joy, you can see that. If this is the case for you, then we have to go for the second solution, and that is to find those corrupt elements ourselves. Let's do that in the main file. I will now close this backup, and then open the original corrupt file, this one here. So as I mentioned before, this file opens fine for me in Revit 2017. The corruption error occurs in Revit 18 when I try to upgrade it. For you, if you cannot even open this in its original Revit version, try to go and select one of the recent backups and open it from there. For now, let's proceed to find our corrupt elements ourselves. To do so, we need to try and save out all the families in this model to external RFA or Revit family files. To save them out, you can go to here, choose Save As, Library, Family. Let's make a folder here for the new families now. I'll call this Families 1. You want to save all the families out and the extension obviously is RFA. Let's click Save and let the process finish. Alright, so after a few minutes, our cutoff families have started to appear. This is the first one. So, when Revit was trying to save out all the families I have in this project, it failed when it encountered one of the corrupt elements. In our case here, that's this family here named KBath. We can now remember this name. I will just write it down here in a separate note file. 
and then close down this error. And you will see, it will keep doing this whenever it encounters a corrupt family. So, I will write down this name as well. And here's another one. And then one more. It should be nice if you can copy the uh, family name, the corrupt family name, straight from the message. But for now, I guess it's too much to ask Revit. Alright, so the process actually finished after I noted down these four corrupt families. We can now go and replace them with some healthy copy. What actually happened was this. When people loaded these project families into this model to use them, they were still healthy. But at times went by, if the model wasn't audited regularly, or if there are issues with the connection between the local file on people's local machines and the central model on the server, actually can introduce potential corruption into elements already in the model, such as those families here. To avoid this from occurring, you need to do two things. Firstly, try to audit your model regularly. You know the button there when you go and open one of your central file, this one here. Make sure you tick this audit box, maybe from time to time. I usually do it once a week, and that should remove any potential error from your file. Do this often, and you may be able to just avoid most of the model corruption along the lifetime of your project. A second thing you need to do is to keep copies of all your families that you are using in your project file here. Because in case of them going corrupt, like we have seen here with these four families, you will know where to go back to to get the original healthy versions of those families and replace the corrupt versions with those healthy copies. In my case, I actually prepared these healthy copies for us. Let's see how you can use them. So, the same four families there. These are healthy copies. Nothing to do with corruption in those files. I can now simply drag and drop them onto this project to load them in. And surely Revit will try to overwrite the existing corrupt versions in this file with those new families we are dragging in. It's time now to select override the existing version. If you don't want to do this every single time for each family coming in, tick this box here to do this for all families you're loading in. So that finished successfully as well. If you want to reconfirm, just go to new save as library and then save those families out one more time. Do this until you encounter no error during this operation. For now, I'm quite sure these are all the corrupt families we had to replace. Let's now see if the file is fixed. I can now do a save as of this file and just call it fixed for now. You can choose to save it as a new central model. I will do that this time. Save it there. And now let's see if I can now upgrade it to Revit 2018 without an issue. I can go to open now. Alright, so that's open successfully as well. I can now double check by maybe looking for this first family there. And yes, you still have it in your file. So, if this works so well, why I had to show you that journal file trick at the beginning? This is because sometimes the corrupt items in your Revit model may not be families. For this tutorial, we made a big assumption that our file was corrupted because of those corrupt families. But sometimes it could be something else. In that case, when you go to this journal file here and use those elements IDs and try to find those corrupt elements, you should be able to select them by those IDs. So, go to the journal file when the family saving out trick fails and take it from there. Probably try to remove those elements by their IDs and see if that fixes your model. One more thing, if you have found the names of the corrupt families that you want to replace, but you haven't got the original version of those files to use, the other way out is just to delete those families from your project. So let's say I found out that this family has to be replaced. I can go there without knowing where my good copy is for this family. 
I can still go here, choose to delete it. That will delete the corrupt family as well as its copies from your model. It's gone now. It's not ideal, you will lose some of your work, but maybe still it's better than losing the whole file due to corruption. When you know if you delete only those four families, the file can be back up and running again. Anyway, avoid going to this problem in the first place by auditing your model regularly, saving lots of backups, and making sure you have families saved out of your project in case you have to go back and use them to fix your model. If you like videos like this every single day, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, practice what you've learned, and I'll see you in the next video.